Good morning. Uh, so, carrying on with uh, rewrite snippet pixie, uh, working on the CLI. Um, yesterday, we were working on the import feature to import a file exported. And left ourselves some to do's. So, we're working on this read file function which is going to take in a file name that's got from the CLI config. Um, and what had we done? OK, so we were trying to unmarshal. And I think we were getting an error, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so I was importing a file that I had just exported and was getting this weird passing time zero as blah cannot pass zero as backslash thing is so I have no idea let's have a look um See if I've um, see if I've actually got where is I mean where is that time coming from? It's not in the file, so don't know what that is even referring to. Very weird. Passing time zero. All I can think it is. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So it's picking up on this last used. Um. Which is a zero timestamp. And that 2006, that's that magic go date, isn't it? Okay. Um, use that for setting up formatting. So if you use a format and say 2006 01, it knows the year and stuff. Okay. Uh, right. So, presumably, that's because. Oh, I haven't got an unmarshala. That's why. For the snippets. Okay. So at the moment, what's happening is it's being read okay. We're coming in. And it's trying to unmarshal the contents of the file. And it's going through and it says, OK, right. Let's use the export format. It does the head OK, because that's pretty simple. It's just strings and ints. Um, then it looks at the date, at data format, and goes, all right, it's going to be a list of snippets. And it tries to unmarshal that straight into a time field of the last used, which is not going to work. We have to do the same as we did on the marshaling from going from this to JSON um, and basically convert it between an in64 and a time. Okay. 
So what's the sin? What's the setup for a custom arm marshal then? Why am I not finding JSON? Encoding, okay. I need a custom man marshal. Hmm, okay, no one want. Okay, let's look at Unmarshaler. Unmarshal Jason takes a slice of bites and returns now. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, it doesn't tell me what to do there, but I think Okay, I'm going to do the try the very basic thing here. So Jason, eh? Oh no, I best not. <laughs> um, yeah. So what do I do here then? I've got to do the, the reverse, 
So I basically need to Is it going to be... I don't actually know what I'm getting here, do I? I'm assuming it's going to be a single blob which approximates a snippet in, well, in this format. So, right, okay, yeah, yeah, so I need to, I kind of need Create a right to use that new format. I'll marshal to it. Pluck out the data. But where do I put the data? If all I can return is an error, I'm very confused. Oh no, I'm doing just a JSON on Marshall. That's right. Two. Yeah, yeah, okay, right, right. credit it to a, a snippet effectively. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm really not awake this morning. Okay. Right, okay, so that makes sense now. So I basically want to do very similar. I kind of want to do don't I? JSON on Marshall. Right, so I want to do a JSON on Marshall the contents to some new structure I'm going to create, which is the data structure, let's say, um, which is effectively that which I could So 
Just wondering whether I should create another structure here. Or just do it on the fly. Do it on the fly for the moment. So Yeah, okay, we'll do that. So we create an empty structure there. I think that's going to work. And then Why is that complaining? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we want to do if I uh, it's not equal to now. Really need to start also completing these things um so we've got that so that's going to do the unmarshalling into data which is hopefully okay now so we should now be able to assign everything to the snippet we'll just do that long form so sid to data dot ID. Uh, abbreviation body that's the same Then we've got the one that's the tricky one. So s dot last used um, is equal to uh, data dot last used, but that is now an in sixty four. Um, so we do time dot. Unix That's right, so we're plucking out a Unix date, getting a time, and we'll just make sure it's UTC because it always is. Um, and then return nil. In theory. I think that's... That's right. So we're basically implementing in the unmarshal, unmarshaler interface by creating a unmarshal JSON function on a snippet. Um, and when that's recognized, the contents of the JSON blob that supposedly a snippet is passed in, which is going to hopefully look like that. Um, and then we're going to unmarshal that blob into that structure, which we know has got this weird in 64. UID is okay because that's a string thing. 
um, and then it's temperature there. It's gonna be high, isn't it? Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, and then we just reassign to the snippet. And hopefully that's it. So in the export, we're then going to print out the snippets just as a quick debug. Okay. Uh, make test. Okay. Make. Uh, presumably, I've still got that running on the daemon I have. So let's try that again. And it worked. It's an array. Where's um where's the last used one? There. August, yeah, because this is, this was all imported from uh, an export from August. So we've got different dates. I think we're good. Neat. Okay, so we're now grabbing the data there, okay. I haven't tested that yet, but we could. Let's um Yeah, we'll do that. Um anything in downloads oh, I'm pretty sure I have actually so uh, Okay, now. Right, let's do uh, hello. We'll do an export to downloads and we'll call it. Oops. Twenty two, no. Okay. Uh, twelve. And I'll just call this um a legacy. Not quite legacy yet, it's the real deal. It's quite stable. Uh, downloads, yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so that's a real set.
Um, and now if we do let's try this. I'm not sure whether it's gonna expand that. No. This is a bit of a test to see whether on the path in yeah okay I'll do dollar home yeah that works okay all right now that's interesting so UUID is being set to zero I mean, the good thing is we've got the legacy data coming in okay, so that's fine. And it's picked out abbreviation. But last used in the UUID are always going to be back at their defaults because we don't export that currently. So we need to make sure. Then we don't clobber um, the UUID and last used date when importing legacy and they are at their defaults. Or better still, don't even look for them. Hmm. I oh know, of course, those are defaults coming from. From the unmarshal. Hmm. I might be able to just do something slightly different there when processing the results. Could probably uh, do something different on the import down here, checking them and stuff. Okay, well, we've got the data coming in, that's good. Um, so now we need to do something about it. Uh, so, right, we've done that to do. We've done the check file header uh, because we do that here.
and then if things so basically if that header doesn't work it doesn't exist um it's gonna drop down into the default um and probably blow up if anything else is wrong so it's just going to be treated as if it's a current format which is fine um, i'm very much relying on type safety here uh, so let's think we've got Got a bunch of snippets now. Uh, we need to process them and determine whether we should import them or not. So we haven't got a config for this yet, but there's a force flag to determine whether we need to just update or not. And then we also need to decide at this point whether we're going to deal with UIDs and so on, last used or not, because we haven't done that before. Um, in the current version, you only get abbreviations and bodies, um, and we don't therefore have to deal with any kind of UID that we might sync up. thinking what format if we've got Okay, so we've got a unique key. So that's an ID, so that's unique by definition. Then we've got a unique unique key on abbreviation. And then we've got unique index. But that's purely because the ID is unique. Um, there's no constraint there. So the only two constraints we've got are on the ID and abbreviation in the database. So we just need to be a little bit careful about that when we do the import. Okay. Let's go get so we don't need to do that in time anymore. Get existing snippets for comparison. So is this a good place to do it? Or should we be doing that somewhere else? At the moment, we've got a write file, which takes snippets and the file name and just does it. And here, we've got a read file, which is currently looking to do a little bit more than it should. I think we need to make it so that it just returns the data 
which in this case is going to be snippets. And then do something with it elsewhere. Yeah, I think that's better for usability and for testing. So let's make it here. We're going to return a slice of snippet snippet, an error. And then here we're going to return I can't do nil here, can I? I can, that's okay. Okay, and then we just need to go, well, we do need to do with that at some point. Well, actually, let's not. That's something else, yeah. That was one of the reasons I wanted to do this. Shouldn't be doing any kind of logic in here as to what to do with snippets. It's about reading the file, and that's not it, so usage. So here we're going to get some snippets. And then we should do something with them. So above here we're doing get snippets. I'm going to just whack some code in here, but I think we're going to be uh, refactoring this later um, to put it somewhere more usable. Um, so we'll do something like that. Grab that. It would help if I put it in the right place. Okay. So, if snippets. Can we just do break here? Guess.
Yeah, I don't really want to do a message there, do I? Or do I? Let's try something then. So we'll do format. Um, Nothing to import. And why is that complaining? So if we don't have anything, just bail. Then nothing to import. Otherwise, go get snippets. This is where it's going to get interesting because it could be a lot of chit chat between the UI and the DBus server. And we have to do lookups in the slice. We could do a bulk import thing on the server, or we just give it the slice. And it does what it needs to do. That'd be a little bit more efficient. That's one hit and a return to say yay or nay. Or we could do slow and steady, slowish, um, and get plenty of output so we can go see if it exists. 
if it does update what we need to update and then send it back and output or keep stats and what does and doesn't import hmm The other thing is, if we're doing when we do the GUI, we don't really want to do all the same code again for the same operation, which is we've got this lump of snippets. We know there's already snippets or could be snippets in the database. Let's reconcile them and update. Don't want to do that again on the GUI. I think we might need to do a bulk import thing. Uh, yeah. And then return yay or nay on that. That's going to be way more efficient. The only issue there is getting data back to say what has or hasn't worked. But do we care? In the GUI, we were just well, if we get stats back. We can display that in the uh, in the TUI and the GUI, but in the GUI we can just go grab the current data set and refresh to show what's the current state now. Yeah, okay. Let's do it server side. Um, yeah, I can't. I'm trying to think if there's any any reason not to, other than it could be a huge amount of data going across in one go. And I don't know. I don't know what the limits are on DBus for that. I did originally consider making it so that the file import is on the server. So you just pass a file reference and it goes, picks it up. But 
in theory, a debus server could be on a completely different machine. Not really relevant here, but you don't want to be breaking that, that contract. All right then, so what we're going to do is just clean that out. So that's, that's, that's gone. I'm going to just do it today because I do need to get going with some stuff a bit earlier today. Uh, so we'll do to do's. Uh, to do. Build server side bulk update function. Pass new updated snippets. To bulk update service endpoint. Display stats status of okay. Okay. Thing I should do. Okay, uh, we do need to do some tests. We haven't got any for the export yet, have we? Uh, so we've got some. the JSON stuff and the write-in file. But none for the reader yet. Okay. I haven't got time to start that just now. I need to do that some other time. Um, but let's do a couple of quick manual things here. I want to quickly test that still works. So these are legacy. So that didn't complain. Import. I've still got more here. Me. These are non-legacy again. That works. Empty file. What does that do? Cool. 
good stuff. Um, if I take just the top bit. Um, nothing to import. Cool. If I take an empty data set here, it should still do the same thing. So data contains snippets, which is an empty data set. Should still be nothing to import. If I take this one. No issue. Cool. Good stuff. Okay. Right, I really need to get going. Got stuff to do. So, yeah, so we've got to do. Uh, where did I put the to do's? in the main yeah okay all right so next time i need to do a daemon side stuff we'll see how well that works we may have to do um paged stuff I may change my mind on that. I might end up doing like an internal package, which does the bulk update, but it does it slowly through the dbus. Um, that could be useful. And then that could be shared code. I mean, I guess in theory, it could even just be an export. We could simply have an import, although that's supposed to be well, it's not really doing anything debussy so it's quite clean as it is it would be better off doing so that's kind of abstract
so probably not there. More thinking needed on that one, I think, and how we're going to do that without blowing up the DBus service. But anyway, that's uh, to think about tomorrow. Okay, um, thank you very much for uh, watching. Um, until next time, you take care.